Daf Mem Ches Amid Aleph, the second line from the top. Rabbi Rabbi Zera Ikle Be Reish Kalusa. They went to the house of Reish Kalusa. Chazil Ahu Avda the Anak Kuz the Maya Pumid the Kumka. They saw the servant of the Reish Kalusa. He put a cup, a container of, as we'll see, cold water, on top of a kettle, of a warm kettle, to warm it up. Now say Rabbi. Rava was upset with him and he reprimanded him. He gave him most for doing that. To put a cup of cold water on top of the hot kettle, it was also. Amr of Zera, why is it also? What's the difference between this and putting one kettle on top of another kettle, which is mutter? That's mutter, so why is this different? Over there is only maintaining the heat level. Both the kettles, the water, and both of the kettles are warm. So he's putting a kettle with warm water on top of another kettle with warm water. But hacha olude kamoilid. But over here, he's warming it up. He's putting the cup that he put on had cold water. It had cold water, and he's putting it on, on a warm kettle. Now, in both of these cases, we're not talking that it's on a fire. We're not talking that there's bishul. But the issue is over here, it doesn't look like hatmana. Hatmana on Shabbos is awesome. Even if it's not moilid, hevel. Hatmana on Shabbos is awesome. Now putting one warm kettle on top of the other warm kettle, they're both warm. The heat level is not being increased. And it doesn't even look like Atmona because it doesn't, it's not similar to Atmona. Atmona is insulating, and this is not really insulating. It's putting one container on top of another container. So it doesn't have the appearance of Atmona. Over here, where it's one container on top of another container, even though it's not Mamish Atmona, you're not insulating, but since it's increasing the heat level, you're taking cold water on top of a kettle, even though it's not bishal, but it looks like atmana because you're taking something which is cold and making it warm. So that has the appearance of atmana. So therefore, he said, to put a cup of cold water on top of the hot, warm kettle, that's also, that looks like atmana. One warm kettle on top of another warm kettle is mutter. Hadr chazi the pares dastura pume de kuba. Then he saw that the servant took a sudra turban and he put it on top of a a, a, a pitcher of water. And then he put a ladle on top of it. So he put the turban on top of the, the container, on top of the of the vessel, or the pitcher. And then he put a ladle on top of the turban to hold it in place. And Rav again, he reprimanded him. He said, it's awesome. Amalir of Zera, Amai, 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 why is this also? What's the Yisra over here? What's the problem? Amalir, Hashta Chazis, you'll see. You'll see what, what, what this will lead to. L'Saif Chazis, the Kama Asule. Then he saw that he was taking the turban and he was starting to squeeze out the water. Now, squeezing out Schita, squeezing out the water is also, that's Libuan. It's like laundering, it's, it's like bleaching, it's like laundering, taking a uh, wet cloth, wet garment, and squeezing out the water is laundering it. That's Libun. So it could involve even a Malach Daraisa. So therefore, it's also That's why it's also to put the turban on the container because it might get wet and you might squeeze it out. So that's why it's even also to put it on the container. Amalei Mashnava Parunka. He said, why is this different than a case of a Parunka that's a cloth that they used to put and to cover a barrel? Why is that any different? That's what this is also. No, he said it's different because that's, the person doesn't care about that. He uses that cloth to cover a barrel. That's what it's used for. And if it gets wet and et cetera, he doesn't, it doesn't bother him because that's his function. But over here, we're talking about a turban. And we're talking about a person who wears a turban. He doesn't want to get wet. If it gets wet, he might come to squeeze it out. So something which is a cloth that he puts on to cover a barrel which he doesn't care about if it gets wet, that's mutter. But an article of clothing to put on a container that has liquid is also. There seems to be a machlaikis in the Paiskim when we say that it's also to put the garment on the barrel. The case involved over here said that he put the turban on the pitcher and he put a ladle on it. 
Now it's mashma from the Shulchan Aruch that this would be also dafke if you have a weight on it, because then we're concerned that it will now get wet. Because like this case here, you have a ladle on it, it's pressing down into it, and now we're more concerned that it will reach the water level and get wet and it'll come to squeeze it out. But if there would be no ladle on it, it would be nothing on top of it, nothing weighing it down, and it would be mutter, it's mashma from other Rishayim, from the Rambam, other Paiskim that no, it's also in any event. Vilaibit and the Mishnah said that you cannot insulate with straw by me nevada bar masameh by mukhin shitaman behem mawal talum bishabas. The Mishnah also mentions mukhin mukhin are the shearings of the wall that is going to be used for felt. Now normally when you have that those shearings that they're designated for felt, that would be muksa. Because that's an item that's going to be processed. It's like a raw material that's going to be processed into something else. So therefore that would be muksa because it's designated to be used for processing, to be made into the felt. Now over here, however, he took it and he already used it for the hatamana to insulate, perhaps we say now this is a designated use, and it's not in the category of muchen, which are going to be used, designated to be processed to for felt. And therefore, perhaps it's muta to be metal, or do we say no, or do we say it's muksa? Well, normally what you would use for insulating for atmona is tevan. So you're going to say just because this person doesn't have a box of tevan, he's going to make it hefker. Okay, at this point, he happened to be <coughs> that he didn't have the tevan right now. For this, at this point in time, he used the muchin for insulation. But you're going to tell me now just because he didn't happen to be that at this moment he didn't have the tevan that he's going to take this mukhin which has value, it's valuable. It can be processed into felt and now he's going to be mafkir and use it just for insulation. We should say that at this point he used it for atwana, but that's not its designated use. It still retains its designation as something that's going to be used for felt. It still does it retains its designation as mukhin and it's muksin. So therefore he held, it is, you cannot be metal to it, it is muksa. Layman Messiah, let's bring a right to this. Time in Begizet Semer, you can insulate with Gizet Semer, with wool, with strips of wool, but Tzipet Semer, and with Tzipet Semer, and also after it was the uh, Gizet Semer are just shore, it's shorn wool. Tzipet Semer, Rashi says, is afterwards they make mats out of it. They process it somewhat and they make mats out of it. Ublashina shell argaman and stripped of purple wool. Ube muchin and with muchin vein metal noison, but it's moksa. So you see that it's moksa. See, it seems to be a clear raya that the muchin are moksa. Where it says no. Imishum haloy, you can't bring a raya from there. Hachikamar. Im loy taman behen in metal noison. No. Over there, it's saying it's muksa if it was not used. You can use these things for atmana. If you don't use it for atmana, these are muksa. But once you've used it for atmana, it's not muksa. Well, if that's the case, of course it's muksa. What's a chiddush over here? If you did not, if you're telling me it's only if he did not use it for atmana, it's muksa. Well, what's a chiddush? No, Gemara says, Mal, the same Mechazalim is You might think it's not muksa in any event, because you might think even though it's going to be used for felt, but in the meantime, in the interim, you can use it to as as a as a couch to to lean on you to lie on, and it can be used as a mat, a floor mat. So you might think that even though it's going to be used for felt, <coughs> but it should still not be muksa because it has an alternate use. It can be used in the interim, the mizgalai, to rest on it. So Kamash Malan that know that if it has not been used for hatmana, it is muksa, it is muksa, it is muksa. However, whether once it was used for hatmana already or not, whether it, does it be, become mutter or does it retain its status as a dover muksa, that is the open question. Rav Chista Shori Lahadura Udre Lebeisadja B'Shabsa. Rav Chista said it's mutter to put back feathers, feathers that fell from a pillow. It's mutter to put it back and to stuff it back into the pillow on Shabbos. 
he asked him the Shayu's question. It says, Matirin base Hatsav Rabbi Shabbos Avaloi Pais. It's a neck on a shirt, on a garment. It has the neck if it was tied up. If it was tied up, not to be permanent. It was not to make a permanent tie on it. When you take it to the laundry, they used to tie up the neck over there. And that's how they used to launder it. They used to tie it up and hang it up. To untie that is mutter, because it was never made to be permanently closed. So matir basis is avaloi pais. But if the neck was never made to make the opening of the neck, to make it in the first place, that's also because now you're completing the garment. Now you're making the garment. Now you're creating, you're making it into a finished product, into a finished shirt, a finished garment, that's also. So if it was open and then it was closed to launder it, to reopen it is mutter, but to open it to begin with, to create the opening and make it to begin with, you're creating the mona, it's also. Awesome. And you cannot put the stuffing, you can't put it into the blanket or to the pillow on Shabbos, and certainly on Shabbos it's also, so isn't that a kasha to what you said? You said you can put the stuffing back into the pillow, and here you see that you cannot. The Gemara says, like kasha. It's not a kasha. No, there's a difference. When we're talking over here, when he said it's motor, that's to put it back in. That is, if the stuffing fell out of the pillow, you can put it back in. There's no issue in putting it back in. You're not creating anything. You're not making so. You're just putting back in the stuffing. But if it was never the pillow was never made to put it into the first place, you're making the pillow. To make the pillow, that's also. If it's a new one, it's also. If it's an old one, to put it back in, then it's mutter tanya namahachi. We can bring a riot to this. You cannot put the stuffing back into the pillow or the blanket on Yontiv. And certainly not on Shabbos. Nasha, however, if it fell out, Machzir Noisim B'Shabbos, then you can return it even on Shabbos, Ben Sarach Lemer B'Yantiv, and certainly on Yantiv. So you see clearly this chilak between a new one and an old one. Amram Yudam Arav, Hapay Seach Besat Sarach B'Shabbos, Chayv Chatos. He said, creating the neck, the opening of the garment on the neck is an Isser Deraisa, it's Chayv Chatos. You're creating the garment, it's Maki B'Patish, you're finishing and creating the garment. He says, why is this different than a lid of a barrel? On a lid of a barrel, they had a barrel, then they put a lid and they sealed it. And over there we say, it's mutter to remove the lid of the barrel. He says, no, it's different. He said, because the lid of the barrel it's not a chibur, it's not one piece, it's not one item. There was a separate barrel, there was a barrel that had an opening. He took a lid, which was a separate item, and he put it on top. Now, even though he sealed it, it's only meant to be temporary. It's not meant to be a permanent seal. So there are two items. He's just separating two distinct items. That is mutter. That's not makibapatish. The barrel was finished. It was a completed barrel. There is a temporary lid that's sealed onto it. He's just removing a temporary covering. However, over here, the garment is one piece. It's woven. The fabric is woven. It's one piece. Now, when he makes the opening, he cuts the opening, and now he is now finishing that garment. He's creating the open. He's creating the garment, the shirt. He's creating the neck. Now it's a complete item. It's makibapatish. Now he's completing that garment. So that's makibapatish. In the case of the barrel, the barrel was a complete barrel. He put a temporary lid. He's just separating a temporary lid from it. Over here, it's one piece. The garment is one piece. Now he's creating that opening. He's now finishing. He's fashioning the fa the, the garment. He's completing the garment. That's Makibit Patish.